Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're going to be covering another grammar pattern and our topic for this video is going to be the grammar pattern that is a uh, blank gimme to mean slightly blank. So this grammar pattern is a relatively simple grammar pattern. We're going to be using it when we want to express that something is slightly in a certain state or condition. Common translations that this grammar pattern will uh, come out to be are slightly looking like, seems to, feels like, having the tendency, etc. Gimi is a grammar pattern that is sometimes confused with the gachi grammar pattern, uh, but in contrast to gachi, which usually translates to to tend to, uh, something that expresses a tendency to do something, gimi is going to be used to express a current state or condition. So if you were to say something like sukare gachi, that would translate to something like uh, tend to get tired. But if we said something like sukare gimi, this is going to mean just feeling slightly tired right now at the moment. I think a reason why gimme is confused with gachi sometimes even though what we said so far doesn't really provide a basis uh, for why they should be confused since their definitions are pretty different is because sometimes a line or a sentence using gimme can translate to uh, tend to do something even though that's more in line with gachi's definition. My personal guess on why this would be is just because of context. Even if your literal wording is just saying something flat out at the moment and not really expressing a tendency, it could be implied that there is a tendency uh, determining on the context of the conversation so far or perhaps the way that you're saying it and I think this kind of works the same way in English if you were to say something like yeah my watch runs a bit late even though the literal wording of that statement is purely describing your watch in its current state as in it is a bit late that statement could actually express that it has a tendency to run late as in it is an ongoing state perhaps the context in the conversation before that established that every time you put new batteries in it, it'll reset back to being late for whatever reason, or it's broken so you can't really fix it out of its current state of being uh, late so it will continue to be in that state, etc. So yeah, that is kind of a context there in which case gimme might also translate to tendency even though that's more in line with Gachi's definition. But I think as long as we, we put more importance behind the intention behind using these grammar patterns and not the actual literal wording, we should be able to pretty easily distinguish between the two grammar patterns if we ever come across them. And once again, similarly to the grammar pattern gachi, gimme is gonna generally be used to express a negative thing. So a negative current state or condition. And so with that said, it is now time to jump into some examples or I guess more examples. Uh, but first let's go through the construction real quick. Gimme pretty much uses the same construction as gachi, which is another reason why they might be confused um, sometimes. We're going to use this grammar pattern with either verbs or nouns and when we're using them with verbs they need to be in their primos form and when we're using them with nouns we just plug them onto the nouns at the end of the nouns. A pretty key thing to note here is that this grammar pattern the words that you can use it with are limited in the sense that it's not just that you can only use them with verbs and nouns but also the actual words themselves. Basically this is going to be confined to words that are actually able to express a state or a condition. So for example, let's just throw our first example in right now. Um, kaze gimi is actually a very common phrasing, perhaps the most common uh, phrase that this grammar pattern is used in. This is just the word kaze, which means uh, cold and uh, gimi, our grammar pattern. And, and this is just going to mean a slight cold or a touch of a cold. Kaze, of course, is a noun. Uh, so all we have to do is just plug gimi right after it. And it is, of course, a word that is pretty indicative of a condition or a state. Let's move on to our next example sentence uh, with another word that this grammar pattern is commonly used in. We have the line kare wa skoshi futori gimi desu. This line right here is going to translate to he is a bit on the fat side. If we break down the sentence bit by bit we see that the first word right there is kare which is uh, him or he. We have the particle wa to mark him as the topic of the sentence. Then we have the word skoshi which is just going to translate to a bit or a little. After that is the verb that we're going to be using this grammar pattern with uh, futoru. And so the primos form of that is going to be futori and then right after that we can just add the word gimi uh, which is what we do. So this would then translate to not um, to get fat but to get a little fat. And then we end the sentence with the copula des because when we use the grammar pattern gimi it plugs onto either a verb or a noun. Uh, either way, it's gonna turn that compound word into a noun itself. So once again, kare wa skoshi futori gimi desu is going to be, he's a bit on the fat side, or he's looking a bit on the fat side uh, because 
uh, that would place some emphasis on the current state as opposed to once again gachi which would be more like he tends to be fat or he tends to get fat. For our next example sentence we have the line kino tetsuya shita kara shousho sukare gimida and this is going to translate to uh, I'm feeling a bit tired uh, because I pulled an all-nighter last night. Break down the sentence bit by bit first up we have kino which is going to translate to yesterday we have the verbal noun tetsuya suru, which means to pull an all-nighter. It's going to be conjugated into shimashita, just the past polite form. Uh, then kara to mean because. So because I pulled an all-nighter. We have the adverb shosho, which is just going to mean a little bit or slightly or whatever. Uh, kind of adding the extra emphasis on slightly. Uh, then we have our grammar pattern. We're going to be using it with the primas form of the verb sukareru. And that is, of course, to get tired. So we take the primas from that, which is sukare, and then we add gimi, and then that turns it into a noun. So sukare gimi is a noun, and then we end the sentence with the kopila da. So uh, all together, kino tetsuya shita kara shousho sukare gimi da. And this will translate to, I stayed up all night, so I'm feeling a bit tired. Again, this is a statement describing the current state, uh, not so much the tendency to get tired when I pull on nighters or something. For our next example sentence, we have kare wa enryo gimi ni Henji shimashita. This is gonna translate to he responded with a touch of hesitation. First up, we have the word kare again. That's gonna mean him or he. We have the particle wa marking him or he as the topic of the sentence. We have the word enryo now, which is a noun that means um, to hold back or hesitation or restraint. We're gonna use this with our grammar pattern. Uh, so we just plug in gimme right after it since it's a noun. So enryo gimme is going to mean a bit restrainful or a a bit of hesitation. Now we're going to turn this into uh, an adverb kind of to modify the verb action that's about to come. So we use the particle ni. So enryo gimi ni is going to basically be slightly hesitantly or slightly uh, restraintfully or something. Uh, then we just have our verbal noun henji suru, which means to reply in the past polite form shimashita. And that will of course mean replied basically. So all together once again, kare wa enryo gimi ni Henji Shimashita is going to translate to he replied or he responded with a touch of hesitation. For next example sentence, we have the line Kesa mo basu wa okure gimi datta. This is going to translate to uh, the bus was slightly late again this morning too. First up, we have the word Kesa, which means this morning. It is going to be marked by the particle mo because this is going to mean uh, today as well or today again. Next up, we have the word basu, which is just going to be bus. Uh, we're going to mark it as the topic with the particle wa. And now we're going to use our grammar pattern with the verb uh, okureru, which means to to be late. So we take the primos form of that, which is okure, and then we add gimi. So okure gimi is going to be slightly late or to be slightly late. And we're just going to end the sentence now with the kopila data because this was in the past tense since we said this morning. And yeah, that's the whole sentence. So uh, kesa mo basu wa okure gimi data is going to translate to the bus was running a bit late this morning too, or as well. Okay, let's cover one more example sentence. And we have the line kyo wa jugyo de hapyo shimasu kara sukoshi kincho gimi da. This line is going to translate to I have a presentation in class today, so I'm feeling a bit nervous. First word in there, kyo, which means today. Particle wa, mark it as a topic. We have the word jugyo, which means a uh, class, basically. We have the particle de to mark the class as the location in which an action is occurring or is going to occur, which is going to be the verbal noun hapyo suru, which means to present, to make an announcement, to make a presentation. It's gonna be in its polite form, uh, shimas, uh, just because. Uh, then it's going to be succeeded by the conjunction kara to mean because. So, so far, because I am going to present in class today or because I have a presentation in class today. And now the second clause of our sentence, which contains our grammar pattern, uh, starts off with tsukoshi, which again means a little bit or a bit. Uh, then our grammar pattern, which is going to be using the noun kincho, which means nervousness. Uh, and yeah, since it's a noun, we can just add gimme right after it. So kincho gimme is going to be slightly nervous or a bit, a touch of nervousness. And uh, with that, we can just basically end the sentence uh, as we have done pretty much with all the example sentences so far. So we just add the kopila des and that wraps it up. So the whole sentence once again, kyo wa jugyo de hapyo shimasu kara sukoshi kincho gimme des. And what does this translate to? You already know, but I'll say it again. Anyways, I'm feeling a bit nervous because I have a presentation in class today. And so that is gimme the uh, grammar pattern that means slightly something or a touch of something or it feels like something or looking like something or sometimes even a tendency of something. It is similar to the grammar pattern gachi. Uh, don't confuse them. Uh, it's also pretty similar with the grammar pattern mitai too. But I think we've covered enough example sentences in this lesson to uh, be able to properly distinguish it from those other two. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. If you'd like to express that, you can like the video, leave a comment below or subscribe 
subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to support more of these video lessons or support more of these video lessons uh, being created more often or uh, support more types of videos, please do consider checking out our Patreon page and consider becoming a patron there. Also included on the screen right now are of course a bunch of links on where to find and follow us uh, elsewhere online including our official website. And lastly check out our Discord server. We've got a community of hundreds of people learning Japanese um, just there so if you're looking for somebody to voice chat with just to practice speaking Japanese or you have a quick question that needs a quick answer or if you just want to talk about uh, anime or music or manga or other Japanese things learn japanese.becausedreams.com slash discord and with that see you next time